Hey, it's Madison, the Black Eagle, and here's a highlight from today's show. All right, he doesn't need any introductions, and he won't shut up. He's been talking ever since he got in here, but he gets paid to talk. You got that right. He gets paid to talk. You got talk. that right. Uh, Roland Martin. Well, first of all, What's thanks. Up, I don't think you've been in here before. Nope. Uh, Your first time here, first right? First time First time here. Yeah, and welcome. Normally man. on the phone. Yeah, all right, all right, but I, I you know, I, I so appreciate you getting up in the morning. and Yeah, because I don't do early morning anymore. Oh, you know, I, I used to do Tom Joyner and TV One. Yeah. So you yeah. see me up at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. It's got to be special. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and depending on what side of the uh, coast you're on. That's too. true. That's true. But That's let, true. First of all, let's do this. Let's talk about uh, how the, 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 the broadcast is going. Oh, the show's going and, great. Yeah, talk about this. Oh, we celebrated a uh, fourth anniversary of Rolling Martin Unfiltered on September 4th. Uh, first anniversary of Rolling Martin, uh, Black Star Network on September 4th. Uh, going great. Uh, we've got six shows on the network, uh, growing it, building it. Got three shows in development. We're planning right now. We're in negotiations to launch uh, our 24 hour fast channel, uh, which now we're what, streaming. What is a fast so, so, channel? Uh, so a fast channel. So when you're watching Pluto TV, Tubi, when you're watching, um, uh, Samsung TV plus, when you're watching those streaming services, uh, those are considered called fast channels. Really? So, okay. Yeah. So when you mm-hmm. like, if you have a Vizio TV and they have their own I lineup do. of shows, right, right. well, that's a fast channel. Okay. Cause I have uh, to call my grandchildren uh, to hook me up. <laughs> <laughs> Go so, ahead. So, that, so that's what that is. And so, uh, we're launching, we'll be launching that hopefully by the middle of October. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing probably about six hours of coverage on election night. Uh, like we did in 2020 and 2018, and so uh, that's going well. Still fighting a good fight when it comes to these advertisers. Same thing on the political side. Uh, matter of fact, I had to cuss some folks out a couple of weeks ago, uh, calling me and say, "Oh, hey, we want this. Ma- we want this major plan, advertising plan. Uh, it was twenty five thousand bucks." And I said, uh, "I'm sorry. You Please. think you think I'm gonna give you an Please. extensive plan?" For I said twenty five. Just and I'm saying, and I'm not. I'm saying just twenty five thousand. Right. It was. It was. And I said, uh, first of all, I reject the money on principle. Uh, I said so. And you know, in this in this cycle, uh, Bloomberg did an article saying nine billion is going to be spent, uh, and they're spending a pittance uh, on black owned media. Uh, and here we are inside of sixty days, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, the you know we we we, have a, we, we had a twenty five thousand dollar ad buy from the Democratic National Committee, uh, but that's been it. Uh, in, uh, the campaigns, and I told him, I said, I don't think for a second that I'm going to be running uh, commercials for free and stuff along those lines. I said, I will keep my behind at home. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but again, you know, and we're we're still fighting it. You know, we brought on some, uh, we brought on some other advertisers. But again, you know, the thing that I keep explaining to them is, don't come to us with this one shot. Don't come to us with this, you know, one time deal. No, we want multi year deals like you do Disney, like you do uh, NBC Universal and others. And so that's the only way we can be able to build mm-hmm. and grow. Uh, but our fan base has been phenomenal. Uh, the giving from our fans, they they still, you know, people they send yeah. checks and money orders. Do I so still do I do I owe you a dollar here? Well, I'm uh, not, no, no, I'm no, not no, no, hundred no, 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 yeah, no, yeah. You brought your hundred when you, but I took another hundred. I know you but, will, but, but, you, but you brought your hundred when you came and did your book. Uh, yeah, we did it on yeah. the air. Uh, but we, and, we've got this tradition <laughs> when Roland first started, and um, you know, and I mean, and you, you know, you, you got to get these folks contributing. You yeah, really do. Uh, my aunt Betty, who was, uh-huh. who was my my mom's oldest sister, right? Before she died, she told her daughter, yeah. But she said, "You have to promise me you you will give my contribution even yeah. after I die." There you go. And so my my cousin she sends me a text. She's like, "Okay, I made Mama's contribution." She said, "Mama promised on her deathbed that you will send Roland my fifty dollars when I'm dead." Before we get into the book, and we'll make sure we get plenty of time on this, and 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 that is, but let's ex- talk about why. This is so important to do what you do. Well, there, I mean, there, there literally is no. When I say there is no one, there's no one who is doing the amount of black news that we are doing every single day. No one. Not Black Enterprise. Not Essence. 
not Blavity, not Byron Allen. Uh, no black-owned media is doing. My show is two hours a day. Faraji Muhammad's show is two hours a day. I have daily. I have uh, weekly shows with Deborah Owens on finance, Jackie Hood Martin on wellness, uh, Greg Carr, uh, his history and culture, Stephanie Humphrey uh, on uh, entrepreneurship tech. My my one on one interview show, Rolling with Roland. Uh, we we have those. I got like say three of the shows in development. Uh, that n- no one else. And so the amount of, amount of bl- and that is the news and information that 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 we reach that's that's black owned uh, every single day. Uh, that that that's a, that's a televised show. No one else is doing. And what happens is, I mean, you take you take when we lose uh, great ones like Ramsey Lewis, who passed away. When we do, you know, when we do these tribute shows. Yeah. I mean, we we don't just yeah. give the cursory, you right. know, we, uh, we did the same thing and, and, with uh, um, what's his name? CNN. Yeah. Bernard Shaw. Bernard got I mean, wiped off the yeah. map because of the queen. So. So. Yeah. So when it comes to those tributes, when it comes to. You know, we, you know the the pastor in Alabama who got arrested for watering. Yeah, uh, we. He, yeah. He, he was on my show first. Yeah, and then when you talk about, and then Jackson. I mean, we've been on it every single day and not giving all oh, five or six minutes, but twenty and thirty and forty minute conversations. And there's just nothing on TV. Like, nothing. There, yeah. there, 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 no one. It's not not on BT, not on TV One, not on Diddy's Revolt, not on any black. So why cable. not? And so, but, well, because I think uh, first of all, when I launched the show, people said, "Man, black folks don't watch news." I said, "Y'all lying." I said, I'm telling you, though. I said, I know for a fact. Uh, and uh, when we, people, they were like, well, you know, your show got canceled at TV One. They said it was because of ratings. I was like, well, no, that's not true. I said, my show, News One Now, was the highest rated show on TV One consistently between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. I said, now, you can't compare me to somebody in prime time because the audience is larger. Uh, and then it's also how it, how the show was being sold. I mean, they were generating a million dollars in revenue uh, selling the show. Well, hell, I did $3 million. Uh, but again, so you got to know also how to sell it and how to position it. Uh, and so that's the thing that, you know, that, that is important. So people believe that we're not watching news. And, and I said, no, it's not true. We are. I said, but the question is, it's what's the news that you're covering? What are you presenting and how are you presenting it? Uh, and so folks told me that, oh, Roland, this is not going to succeed. I was like, really? Watch this. Mm-hmm. And and they're shocked that we're into four years. And now, of course, you see uh, other folk who try to infuse black content in it. But here's the deal. And I make it clear. I don't, folks, folks, I remember they asked, well, how are you going to compete? I said, first of all, I don't compete with CNN. I don't compete with MSNBC. I said, because here's the piece. You're talking about billions of dollars, these multi-billion dollar corporations. I said, but here's the reality. If it's something black, CNN's money, MSNBC's money mean nothing. Because you know what? They can never out-black me. They cannot out-black me. And that means that we, when it's a black story, mm-hmm. oh, we're going to own that thing. We're going to own it. So what do you do? Because uh, what, what are you doing as it relates to this wall-to-wall coverage? And this will lead me into the book. This wall-to-wall coverage with the queen. That don't mean a damn thing to me. See, that, that ain't a black story. Now, what I covered was the angle, why is it we are, folks are unwilling to talk about colonialism yeah. and its impact? Right. See, that's, that's the whole piece. And so that's what I'm saying. That story means nothing to me. And it's not going to be on CNN. And that's what we, we've yeah, spent know, ever yeah. since it began. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wasting. First of all, when, when, when Megan and Harry, I, I remember uh, Jay was my producer, Jay came to me and he said, uh, you know, we really should go all in because, you know, a lot of black women are really into, uh, you know, this wedding. I said, Mm-mm. they can get their own show. Yeah, yeah. He was like, well, you know, even the women on staff, I said, they can get their own show too. I said, I don't give a damn about Meghan and Harry getting married. I said, will we go all in on an African prince marrying somebody? I said, I said I'm not dealing with that. And the other thing is, I also, I don't deal with people's personal stuff. What I mean by that is, if you care about who so-and-so's dating or who so-and-so got married to, or who so-and-so having a baby with, who's an entertainer, I said, y'all go watch somebody else. I don't cover that stuff that, because th- that's your personal business. Now, did you make that decision? Always. Well, no, hold on a second now, be- because with with uh, uh, when you were covering entertainers, were you in that? Because that, that that's a big part of of entertainment. I, I did it. I did it uh, way back, even when I was a TV one. In fact, I remember. I was yeah, like, that's why I was going yeah. with TV. No, one I did it there. No, yeah. I, I remember. I remember my my, uh, my staff. They they kept putting in this in our in the script. Sherry Shepard divorce, and I kept ignoring it. Uh, and by the third time, I said, "Hey, don't put this crap in here again." Now I know Sherry personally. I said, "But it don't matter. I don't give a damn about no divorce. 
I said, I don't care. And in fact, I remember I was at the American Black Film Festival and we're sitting at a table and when this is when Caitlyn Jenner um, um, uh, made it, came out. Yeah, and, made that and, and, transition. And, right, and Gail yeah. King was like, did you cover? I said, nope. She's like, are you serious? I was like, no. I said, that's her business. I said, listen, if somebody comes out, that's your personal business. I said, I don't believe we as the public, we don't need to, Kerry Washington get married. People like, Kerry Washington got secretly married. Wasn't no secret. She knew. Her family knew. Her fiance knew. People who got invited knew. I'm like, we need to get out of this notion that somehow they owe us all of their personal business. My whole deal is, if you have a baby, if you get divorced, if you're dating, that's your personal business. And again, but but isn't it true, Roland? Because uh, I I do the same thing. I I mean I'm not. We every day we get a lineup of this this. I I don't. It, there's too many. Is it in in my mind? It's too. There's too many important precisely issues precisely and and. And but a lot of these entertainers don't we have to educate them? Oh, absolutely! Don't you know? Quit having your PR people throw this at us. Or also, I, I never forget. So nineteen ninety nine, and and again, somebody who's listening maybe think, oh, uh, transgender is important. Yes, but guess who covered black transgenders being killed? I did. That's a news story. That's the news. And story. And that's what I'm saying. Right, that's right. that's the yeah. thing. And yeah. so uh, Jamel Moore, when he was killed by Ed, uh, Ed Buck. I put Jasmine Koenig on my, the first national outlet that did. That was a news story. But see, so it's not a question of, well, you don't care about LGBT. No, that's the news, not somebody's personal business and who they're dating. Yeah. So what, 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 so what happens in, with these stories is people go, well, the public cares. Just like, well, the public is watching uh, the whole Queen stuff. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And here's my whole deal. Go watch them. Feel free to yeah. go watch them. But I got finite hours. And finite time, right. and I'm going to take my finite hours you and got, finite time. I, I got four hours that's here. It. And you, you got, like, right. this is what I'm going to focus on. Yeah. I can't sit here and yeah. cover everything. And yeah. if you want that, go somewhere else. I'm I, perfectly fine and, with And it. I'll be honest. I don't think people, it, it, it's a difference between wanting something and having it presented and you don't have any anything else. Yeah, it's like yeah. the day, uh, when the Poor People's Campaign came out with a report on, on the impact of COVID on poor people. Uh, I had they had them on the show and Reverend Barber. I said, "What other TV shows did y'all do today?" And they, yep. He said, "None." None. He right. said that day all they were focused. He said the network said we're focused on Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's hearings and Ukraine. I said, "So you got twenty four hours and is seven days a week, two uh, stories, uh, right? You covering today? Yeah, and that's and that's part of the deal, and which is why we've got to have uh, black owned media. We got to have black targeted uh, folks who are focused on the issues because otherwise they're going to get ignored, and the things that are small or inconsequential or irrelevant to mainstream folk, to me and you, that's mm-hmm. huge. And so we blow it out and look at us like, what's wrong with y'all? Well, that's important to us and our audience. And so that's really why why it matters. And, you know, uh, I, have a, I have a mural on my wall, Freedom's Journal, the first black newspaper. They wrote this in March 16th, 1827. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. And I say consistently, we as black people will rue the day when we are begging someone else to tell our story. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we black black folks don't get through Jim Crow without the Chicago Defender, the Pittsburgh Courier, the Land Daily World, without those black newspapers, Ebony and Jet, without uh, the work that they were doing. Chicago uh, Defender. So if we don't mm-hmm. have those, yeah. you don't get through Jim Crow. You don't have those battles. So we can't be so locked into entertainment and sports and gossip and reality shows and you know the issue that people are like, well, man, I know that was going on. Yeah, because you were spending your time worrying about who the hell somebody was sleeping with and someone who was married. Uh, and I tested some people with this. I posted something about Nick Cannon and Eddie Murphy both having 10 children. And it was all these comments. I mm-hmm. said, well, that's interesting. I said, y'all, because when I post on my Instagram page how we're trying to access billions of dollars in advertising, I might see 18, 20 mm-hmm. comments. But more than 800 of y'all commenting on Nick Cannon's baby. I said, now, which impacts black America more? accessing the 322 billion spent by advertisers or who Nick Cannon has a kid with. Yeah. Let's talk about white fear. Um, and let's, so let me go back. When did this concept of this book first come to your 2009. mind? Why? I was at CNN, John Avalon and I were waiting to go on the air. And I said, John, we're living in the beginning of white minority resistance. 
He's like, what do you mean? I said, oh, trust me. Because that was a survey that was done. And the question, this is, this is when Obama was inaugurated. And the question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America for your children? Every group, black, Latino, Asian, every group, majority said yes. Only one group, less than majority, said they were, they were white Americans. I said, why? You've got to go behind that. You know, we were told years ago, America's going to be in one day a nation, majority of people of color. People like, man, I'll be, so, I'll be dead and gone when that happens. Well, guess what? Uh, white folks are having babies. Black folks, Latinos, keep having babies. Immigration. And all the white death rate soars. So now all of a sudden, here we are. It's 2022. We are 21 years away from that happening. Of a nation that's majority mm-hmm. people of color. And so what you're now dealing with, then in September 2016, right before the election, the question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America economically for the next 10 years? Black people, lowest wealth, highest optimism, which makes no sense. Latinos, second lowest wealth, second highest optimism. White Americans, highest wealth, lowest, lowest optimism. Op- yeah, right. now, hold up. How y'all got so more, the, money more, more money than everybody but yet, else? But a pessimistic. Right, about the future. Yeah, yeah. And so what you're what you're seeing, so the Colin Kaepernick situation, uh, the January 6th, remember, who was Donald Trump targeting? Four cities, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Detroit. Mm-hmm. What they got in common? Those are black cities. Mm-hmm. So what you're dealing with is this fear. Could, and did, did you, you said Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. first. That you take, was so yeah. Now let's take the tax on critical race theory, the 1619 Project and diversity, equity, and inclusion. What we are seeing is, and right now, polling show, Ron Brownsey talks about it all the time, this number of Americans who believe that rape, discrimination against whites is equal or greater to, than that of African Americans and other minorities. So what we're dealing with is a nation that is changing, and there are white folks who cannot handle this. They can't handle the fact that you and I actually now have a voice. We, 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 we don't have to big right. they can't handle the black political power latino they can't handle the changing face of america the battle over colin kaepernick that wasn't about the flag that was about how we have been raised when it comes to the flag and the and, and national anthem if you black when you see police brutality there's a flag on that cop's sh- patch right. on that shoulder so our view of the flag and our view of America is different than white Americans where it's apple pie and we were always the greatest in the world. And so... Yeah, Richard Pryor does this comedy routine. We have a different relationship with the police. That's a ma- funny... Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so we and so yeah. what you're seeing now is... So when people are saying, Joe, we're changing as a country. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. We're changing. Well, our values, how our values changing. The reality is we've had white values. We've had... Everything is being seen through a white prism. Everything. Now we come along and say different outlook. And this whole, the fear is like, oh my God, they're changing things. But the greatest fear is we're going to be losing our jobs. We're going to be losing let me, power. Let me ask you, Roland Martin, why then is the book White Fear different? than any other discussion or book that's been written. Because first, I'm not dancing around the issue. I'm tying it also to what is happening politically in this country uh, and understanding when you have this this drive for this ideology, it is driven through a white nationalistic view. When you look at these white conservative Christians, what they're doing, that is white, that is white Christianity. That slaveholder religion, Reverend Barber talks about that all the time. And so we have we we must have the conversation because mainstream media, which is led by largely white men, are refusing to deal with this because even they don't want to deal with the changing reality. It's now you finally are seeing black women with the freedom to wear their hair natural on television. But you still have Republicans voting against the Crown Act in Congress. Why do we need this legislation? Well, y'all don't have that problem, but you got black kids who are trying to wrestle and the referee says, you got to cut your hair. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suspend you. What the hell does my locks have to do with wrestling? So what we're seeing is we're still seeing the policing of black bodies, which really, again, identifies with a different view of culture. And that's what's happening. And so we've got to confront it. We've got to not fall into these traps. When, 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 when I saw the attacks on critical race theory, I said, if y'all engage in that, 
you're actually helping them with the conversation. People are like, well, what do you what mean? Do you, well, I was just going to ask you, explain what you because mean. Because here's the deal. What the right does is they conjure up these things in their laboratory. Steve Bannon even said this. And so they will take something and they will drive it in conservative radio, conservative blogs, conservative right. television, and then say, why, why aren't y'all discussing this? And, and But then there are they – What? let me make sure I understand. So they're helping us. No, no, no. What they're doing is – And so, it, I tell you why I bring this up. Uh, your boy Lee – what's his name from CNN? Uh, uh, Terrell. Terrell. Fox. Uh, 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 Leo Terrell. Leo Terrell. So, you know, yesterday he comes up. The only reason Barbara um, it, B- Bass is yeah. – Because she's a – black Karen Bass. She, yeah, yeah, she's a black female. She has the only reason she's going to get elected. Well, this morning I said, Roland, you just helped her. You really just helped right. her because you just pissed off a whole lot of people in Los Angeles. Right. But Go it, ahead. Right. But, but what they do is, so here's what they do. Karen Bass. Right. Yeah. 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 Congressman Karen Bass. So here's what they do. They sit over here and they say, we're going to create this thing. And then they know how weak mainstream media is. Right. And then they go, why aren't y'all discussing it? And then the scared white folks in mainstream, oh, my God, oh, my God, we're going to get criticized by the right. So now let's talk about it. I'm like, wait a minute, you driving their agenda. And so they're happy because you now <laughs> have you now have allowed them to come onto you, their, your platforms and they now have set your agenda. If the right is ru- running with some something, Joe, you like, y'all can go to hell. Yeah. You are not going to determine my show rundown. Right. But mainstream media is so weak, they're afraid to get attacked and like, oh, we're not discussing this. So then they then start discussing it. So then they take it further. And now all of a sudden the right go, gotcha. All right. You yeah. now you now are driving our agenda. And this is why white fear is different than anybody else has yeah. talked to. Okay, now. Because I'm confronting. I'm confronting. I'm confronting. I'm 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 asking the second and the third and the fourth question to that first one. Why are y'all op- not optimistic? What are you scared there about? There you go. There you go. What are you scared and about? And you answer it in, Absolutely. in white fear. And I'm laying out exactly why why they are scared. And then I'm saying uh cuz Mitch Landry in his book, he wrote, he said he literally said white people, black people are not going to do to us what we did to them. And that's the real fear. Pat Buchanan yeah. wrote this years ago. Years ago. Pat yeah. Buchanan said Yep. They, they, yep. they might do to us. If they get power, they might it, do it, to it's us. The old, it's the brown eyed, brown eyed, blue eyed experiment. That's it. That, now, Jane now, Elliott. Now, only who gave gotta, me an endorsement. We could, we could see. I should have brought you in in the eight o'clock hour. We could have <laughs> two hours because we get together. Well, I live here. I can always come back. All right. You will. Let me ask this question. Has your, your book been banned yet? No. Okay, just not, check. Not, not yet, but I'm quite well, sure. Well, that's right. It's not. I, it, it, it's got, it, it just dropped today. It just but, dropped today. But, but trust okay. me, I'm sure that, that I'm sure yeah. that they they will not want that conversation had. But it, right. but it has to be had. All right. And, and, and I also I challenge white folks. All right. Now let let thirty seconds. So let's let's sell some books. How can people get your book? It's, it's everywhere. You can get it Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Indie Books, Target, Books a Million. But also, if you support Black bookstores. Order it through a black bookstore. Help them out and as then, well. Uh, Be, uh, ben, Bella. ben Bella Books is the publisher. Uh, you can go to their website as well. Uh, they're out of Dallas, uh, so certainly glad to partner with them. Uh, but again, okay. we have the real discussion, and you know, I ain't scared. <laughs> 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 Roland Martin, the book, White Fear. How the Browning of America is making white folks lose their minds. You can listen to yours truly, Madison, the Black Eagle, live every Monday through Friday on Sirius XM Urban View Channel 126 or anytime on the Sirius XM app.